everyone, you should have do what you can. Good evening to one and all present at this joyous occasion. I'm Gabriel Farhan, here to do a little more than breaking my eyes. I'm here to talk about the rise and fall of a dark empire or the Medellin cartel or more specifically its first leader, Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria. A true story of rice riches, known as the true king of cocaine, or to some people, a Robin Hood. Escobar rose from humble beginnings in Colombia, being born in a small town called Rio Negro, 45 minutes from Medellin. His ambition played a major role in his rise to power, says every Escobar biography. He wanted to be big, huge, and make a difference. He studied political science at La Universidad de Antuqua. But he had to drop out because of his inability to pay the college tuition. His ambition was to become the president of Colombia. But instead, he became a petty thief and started stealing cars, tombstones, and eventually started smuggling marijuana and cigarettes. But his ambition to become bigger caused him to start killing and kidnapping. He eventually became a millionaire by age 22. But he was not satisfied. So when he saw that the demand for cocaine in the US was booming, he saw an opportunity to smuggle it from Colombia. So after working with other smugglers for a while, he seized opportunity by ordering the death of a Medellin cocaine trafficker by the name of Fabio Restrepo and took control of his operations. He was not alone though, as he had a team. Among them were a pig butcher turned professional killer, a marijuana trafficker and more, with which he formed the infamous Medellin cartel. They developed efficient and profitable ways of shipping large amounts of cocaine into the US. He even had two submarines that he obtained from the Russian Navy and exported tons of cocaine. He even had cocaine in airplane tires. The pilots could earn up to 500,000 per day on account of this. The Medellin captain held the biggest market share in the cocaine market at that time by having 80% of the market. Escobar especially monopolized shipping cocaine into the U.S. by shipping uh, by pulling in 15 tons of cocaine every day into the U.S. Despite earning money through illegal means, Escobar was featured in the Forbes list of the world's richest people in the world for seven years straight. And in 1989, he was the seventh richest person in the world. Evidently, he had a big and extravagant lifestyle. He partied hard, real hard. He bought tons of luxuries and sports cars, helicopters, planes, multiple boats, fleets of vehicles and submarines for smuggling. He even bought a Learjet to fly his cash around. He purchased a professional football team. He bought tons of mansions across Colombia and the rest of the world. But Escobar was a very charitable person. He was very keen on his public image. That is why he was known as a Robin Hood to some people. He used to come to small towns and give away money in the public square. He even built a neighborhood of a thousand homes and multiple football fields. It is speculated that he used this as a cover for smuggling. He even got himself elected to the Colombian government until a member of the government called him out for being a smuggler. He was later assassinated. He even had his own prison called La Cathedral that he built due to heavy pressure from the Colombian government and bounties on his head. He would show the people that protected him. He was afraid of getting extracted to the US, from which comes his famous quote, whether a grave in Colombia than a cell in America. The prison was located on a mountain top and was usually surrounded by fog. The fog would protect him from air attacks. So basically, he was being protected from his own enemies. The prison was just a state-of-the-art party house. He went on two assassinations while in prison. He had computers and fax machines Word got out about his opulent lifestyle, and this was not taken nicely by the Colombian government. They ordered him to move to an urban prison, and a SWAT team arrived at the prison to move him to an urban prison. Well, we can all guess that did not go down well. A bloodbath took place, and it is a miracle how he escaped that place. The cartel crumbled under pressure from the authorities, and Escobar went into hiding. He even burned $2 million because his daughter became hypothermic. He was later found and gunned down in a rooftop battle. The praise that made Escobar successful to a certain point of time was his relentlessness, his ambition, and his capability in the art of negotiating. Had he used all this in a positive way, 
would have achieved his dream of becoming the president of Colombia or a well-known entrepreneur. But instead, he chose to become rich by resorting to crime. Through illegal means, Escobar earned more money in a minute than an average person in a lifetime. His death destroyed the lives of hundreds and thousands of people, and millions of people went into addiction and overdosed and died. He was not he did not care about the welfare and fate of the youth. And ultimately, for what? His brutal, merciless way got him death. So my dear friends, ultimately, crime never pays. Try to be a beacon light of hope to the world and the people around you. Thank you. Over to you, Postmaster.